get started if you guys are ready. Uh, call meeting to order, establish a quorum. Do the invocation for us. I'll do it. Can you all pray with me? Dear Holy Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, this wonderful school district and this wonderful community. We thank you for uh, uh, those in it that serve our, our kids. We thank you for the group of individuals that are here tonight um, that serve in a different way, but in, in the same capacity. Uh, of it's in the best interest of our kids and our community. We just thank you for their, their service. We invite the Holy Spirit to, into uh, this room tonight as we make decisions about the district. And uh, we love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty. Johnny on the spot. We have difficulties. I've texted you all sometimes about, you know, we got a bus broke down here or there or whatever. And, and uh, to be honest with you, by the time I send that text to you, it, it's already taken care of, or at least it's it's on the way. And so Matt is he does a great job with that. And uh, um, that's just the stuff that that y'all know about. And that's not the um, everyday um, getting kids picked up. I mean, it starts with Matt every day. Uh, Picking the kids up and taking them home. And so he does a great job. Um, and Matt, I'm just going to say thank you in front of all these people. So thank you. Hey, before you get started, you. I want to thank your wife for the food. <laughs> yes, sorry about that. Yes. Hey, delicious. It's amazing. It's very I'm, I'm getting it back just by chance. <laughs> <laughs> so my name's Matthew Hilly. Um, I was born and raised in uh, Mansfield. I joined the military in 92. So I'm going to give a little background about myself so you kind of understand kind of where I come from. Um, Joined the military in 92, retired from the military in uh, 2011. Um, we moved here, and my stepfather was David Barclay, so we actually bought the family farm. So I've been tied to Plano's forever. Um, and I knew my kids, one of my kids would go here. Um, so that's kind of what drove us to Plano's. And so after we got here, I really wanted to work for the school district, but I just didn't know how to get my foot in the door. So after a while, just job jumping, and my wife became the president of the Van Boosters, I really started meeting everybody. I met Tommy met a lot of people and that when the opportunity came that's how how I started here so I got here in January of 2011 I just passed almost 11 years retired from the military now it's crazy life just passed you by fast we have four kids while our son is a junior here still so we have this year next year and then we'll be kid free I'm looking forward to that um, and then we have three daughters that are already adults so I'll go ahead and so uh, right now, we have um, 17 uh, routes, 16 in the morning, 17 in the afternoon. There's two sped routes, a.m. and p.m., um, and that's kind of how we do everything. Now, we do K through 12, rides the same bus, and it's worked out great so far. Um, a lot of school districts have to do, you know, double routes, so they'll do elementary, intermediate, and then they have to go back to junior high, high school. But our, our drivers are really, um, they really welcome it because it doesn't tie them being here all day. So it's a, it's a benefit for us to do that. Um, so total this year, this year from, um, so I'll give some numbers, and they'll be from August to February of uh, February 18th. So, so far this year, route mileage, we've done uh, 108,739 miles on routes. Um, and then we have trip and others, so it would be um, any small vehicles, any of the red and white buses, anything non-route related. And we have, so far this year we've done uh, 102,959 miles, which is a total of 211,000 miles, 698. So we do a lot of mileage, a lot of different vehicles, a lot of variety. Um, and everything's been wonderful so far. We've had a lot of support um, from admin. We've had a lot of support from all the campuses to make it work. And our 
bus drivers are just amazing um, because they do routes, shuttles, there's a lot of things they do. Um, and they're, they're, they're Johnny on the uh, We currently, right now, have 47 buses, 15 at the junior high, and only they're only there because we still have enough space here. Um, we use tw There's 24 buses, actual route buses we have over here, and then we have the total 15 there, and then the rest of them are the red and whites. Um, our route buses um, are average of, of nine years old, the ones that are here, average nine years old, average mileage is just under 80,000 miles. Now some of them have a lot more mileage only because um, we just got some new buses. So we do have some that are 150. We don't have, we don't have anything 200,000 miles except for over at the junior high. So our mileage is really good compared to Granberry, um, which you'll see a lot of times. They're 400, 500,000 miles in their buses because they drive a lot of miles. So we're really fortunate in that manner that our buses age out before we ever get them. The amount of miles it ages them out. We age about by years. Um, activity buses. We currently have eight activity buses. We have six that are 46 passenger. Um, three of them were from 2015, three of them were 2018, and we got the two small buses 2020, which are 14 passenger. Um, average miles on those are uh, the 2015, which are nine years old. The average mileage on those is just under 90,000 miles, which is not bad for a diesel engine. Because all our stuff is diesel, with the exception. Uh, two s small sped buses and two of the red and white small buses are gasoline. Everything else we have is diesel. Because we can really get some longevity out of that. Uh, the 2018 models are five years old and they're just under 45,000 miles. So we're and we're really good because I'm, I'm really watching my mileage on my stuff to try to make everything kind of stay together. Um, and then of course the 2020 are two years old or three years old and they have just <laughs> Um, the junior high buses that we have over here, we have a lot. We have a lot of buses, and excessive buses, but we have some that are still from the 90s over there. Um, the average, all the average age over there, 21.4 years of age. Everything that sits over the junior high. Do um, they we, all run? They do. I, I would use them locally, yeah. but I would never send them out of out of Columbus right. or Somerville County. Sure. But yes, we do, a lot of them we use when we do the big event. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions about buses? Um, okay, so our white fleet. So uh, we have a total of five trucks, three for the FFA. One of them is currently being uh, fixed down in um, Stephenville, so we have that one back. We have three um, for the FFA, and they're about 6.6 .6 years old, and they're just over 60,000 miles average. Um, and then we have some, some of our Suburbans. So we have uh, 13 Suburbans slash SUVs. And uh, the average year on year is age on average eight point six years and about ninety that ninety nine thousand miles. Um, we do a lot of mileage. Like we have um, we have some kids we go pick up at Weatherford three way. We have our toller. We take kids home um, in the middle of the day. We have a lot of shuttles. We take uh, uh, high school kids to Hill College twice a day. So we do a lot of mileage running around. Um, let's see here. So, that, so I have, there's six Suburbans that I really send. So my lower mileage Suburbans, I really send out. Like when we have away games, like when we go to Lubbock, Abilene, that kind of stuff. So I have six of those vehicles, and they're, they're newer vehicles. So, and then my older vehicles, I, with higher mileage, I'll stay closer to home. That's kind of how I, I do it. Um, and so the newer vehicles we have, they're only about 4.6 years of age, and you're, only, you're less than 50,000 miles average for, the, for all those. And that's kind of everything for our, our, our small fleet. And then kind of, uh, I was going to kind of wrap it up with kind of our fuel usage. So, so far this year, um, we've used 20,939 gallons of diesel and 28,720 gallons of gasoline. Which if you average that up uh, per month, that's about 3,000 gallons of diesel per month. And um, just over 1,000 gallons of gas per month is about what we see we utilize. And that's routes, that's everything. Even grounds for their stuff and anybody else who uses it <coughs> any of the, the facilities. And I'm available for any questions you may have. What does your summer usage go down to on the fuel? If you're about 4,000 during the year, what do you look at like in the summertime, do you know? Yeah, it goes way down. Um, I, don't have to, I don't have that number. I can get that number back to you. Significantly. Yeah, significantly. I used to get uh, fuel twice a month. Um, 
that's usually, I, I spend about $20,000, in between fifteen dollars and $20,000 a month, depending on what the fuel cost is, about a month. And where do you get the, I mean, wholesale? Yeah, and, 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 and they're in the, they're in the summer, we'll go out for bids. So our, the way we do fuel is, you can do it one of two ways. You can commit to so many gallons at this specific price, or you can do it so much over the rack price. Whatever the going price is, you do so much over that. So we go out for bids, and we get three bids, and then that's how it determines what we use for that school year. And then the next summer, then it'll, it'll re, be redone. So how do we do it? We do it where we, we do, guarantee we do the, so just much. over the rack price. Just oh. Oh. The rides to Hill College every day too. Is that for welding, cosmetology, nursing? Uh, uh, every, anything that has to do with Hill College over in Cleveland. Now we have taken for the, uh, the the guys to go to mechanics or whatever, and then a lot of it's just cosmetology right now. Okay. That's that the last biggest thing we've got going there right now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. If there's anything you guys would like to know, please let me know and I'll, I'll uh, bring it up here next time. Financial report. I'm going to keep it short this month. We don't have a whole lot. So the PEANS data has not come out yet for the four, six weeks. So um, your top sheet that you have in front of you is the one that looks like this. Uh, the only change from last month I updated to you in summary of finance. They did release an updated one on February 9th. Um, the only notable changes on it is they updated our tax collections, the estimated tax collections, um, which are now very close to what our estimate was. It's closer to what they actually will be, which then dropped our net state and local revenue just a little bit, but it dropped our recapture down to below what we budgeted, which was great. Again, it's early on. As you all know, this can change a lot, but right now um, this adjustment was good for us. This is closer to what we budgeted. so. Next month, we'll have updated PEAMS numbers for the four, six weeks, so we can change our actual as of, it'll be as of the four, six weeks, and get an update on that, so we'll see how we're tracking attendance by then, and we've had a lot of sickness, so we'll see if that can get, get better in the fifth, six weeks. Um, and then the other sheet is just your bond update. I just included that in there just so you could see where we're tracking on all those projects and designations that we have. That is all I've got for you this month. Unless any of you have questions. Thank you. All right, superintendent report. All right. Well, let me see. Uh, we got a lot going on, so uh, we we moved our student recognition so everybody can go to the game uh, tonight as much as possible, um, and, and the principals too. So that's why it's a little shorter tonight. Um, speaking of the game too, so it's, it's going to happen. Just a little bit, and just kind of like the girls. Um, if we would win um, tonight, uh, we'd have early release on Friday to allow everybody to go because they'll play Lubbock on Friday and Saturday, hopefully. So it'll be very similar to the girls. Um, enrollment, we are at 2,051 currently. That's 75 students uh, up from last year, 3.8% increase. Uh, good for us. Um, Staffing, we're currently working on staffing for next school year. So we meet with the principal, special ed, um, Kayla, Tommy, Susie, uh, all leadership to, to look at our needs for next year, who's retiring, who's, uh, who we need to move here and there, whatever. So uh, uh, we'll be uh, heavily into that um, after spring break and on. Uh, hopefully we'll get all that stuff done early June and get everything set for the school year. Early June is the goal. Um, um, projects currently or, or the elementary playground phase two is, is done except for the turf and they'll be back tomorrow to start working on that, finish that up probably by the end of the week. Um, bleachers, our tennis court covers are on back order. We're expecting them now and I, I got a text today. Uh, I should have a date for that. Tomorrow, um, cafeteria tables. I talked to you all about. Uh, you know, we had those 13 that were messed up, or half of the 13. Well, they did them again and they messed it up. I just got an email today uh, that says uh, the initial laminate was printed uh, with 
incorrect logo of, for 13 of the 26 tables, we immediately requested secondary production uh, to correct that error. Uh, we expected those to ship at the end of February. Upon inspection, the laminate uh, recently printed, and we noticed a defect, and unfortunately, we need to reprint them again. So, once again, it's very hard to see. You really wouldn't see them if you're up close, but uh, from a distance, you can see it looks like there's a little apostrophe on it. But uh, so now we're looking at uh, mid April to get those in, but they were supposed to be here now. And it was a really good letter from the company, just apologizing over and over. Um, exterior lighting, we should be working on that during spring break. Uh, restroom renovations at the high school, spring break also. Uh, I did get a phone call today from TEA saying that we were going to have another door uh, intruder audit uh, next month. So we will be having another one of those. Gave our heads up to all our uh, campus principals, SROs, Mr. Kathy, Mr. Corcoran. Uh, so everybody knows that it's coming to be uh, heads up on that. So. All right, consent agenda. Uh, minutes from the January 22, January 22nd, 2024 regular meeting, district monthly investment report, January financial report, budget amendments, appointment of early voting clerks and deputy early voting clerks, and approval of district audit for Glenrose ISD financial records and activities for fiscal year 2023-2024. Does anybody want any of those pulled individually? If not, do we have a motion? Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Very good. Action items. Uh, consider approval of joint election agreement with City of Glenrose, Dr. Overbook. Very good. May 4th, is that right, Mrs. Yes, sir. May 4th. So uh, just recommend that, that uh, uh, we consider a joint election with the uh, City of Glenrose, the City Council election also, so we can uh, do that with the City. And we have our board election, which we have five running for two spots. So I make a recommendation that uh, we approve a, a joint election agreement with the City of Glenridge. Any questions? Anybody? Uh, what are they charging us for? I do on the voting machines. Uh, <coughs> One year we got into a deal. What was that? We, that was, we, that was we had that all figured out three, four years ago. Three years ago. Total cost is sixty five hundred to be split uh, between the entities, so it would be split two ways. Great. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, and that has the voting machines here for the early voting. We'll be doing all of it at city because the city has a. So an then one of well. you guys have to go down there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've heard the recommendation. Do we have a motion? Um, motion. Second. Second. All in favor? All opposed. <coughs> Good. All right. Mr. Corkin, consider approval of administrative administrator contracts for 2024-2025 school year. I believe in your packets <coughs> you have the recommendation of Dr. Overbo uh, for all current administrators. Uh, this is the month we approve their contracts for the following year. For the first time in 25, 24 years. If y'all don't want to, that's up to y'all. I mean, it's, it's up to y'all if y'all want to. I'm not on it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind? <laughs> no, I you think you've got an outstanding group of administrators in this district, and you hear some of the horror stories around, and, and uh, we're blessed to have great administrators from top here at admin all the way down to our vice principal. So, uh, Glen Rose ISD recommends approval for all administrative contracts for 24-25 school year. Any questions? Do we have a motion? So I'll move. Second. All in favor? Very good. All right, Mr. Corcoran again. Consider approval to grant the city of Glen Rose easement at Glen Rose Junior High for the safe route to school okay. sidewalk project. Yeah, if y'all aren't familiar, if you weren't on the board, I mean, this has been, we were trying to figure out the other day how long this has been going on. I think five or six years, uh, we put away 75000 a year in our budget, uh, waiting for the city to qualify for this grant for the Safe Sidewalk Program. Um, apparently, the grant process is very tedious, 
uh, just talked to Jim Holder, and uh, he, they now need an easement agreement from us uh, to allow, I think all told, about six square feet of our land. Uh, it's a little corner on each of the corners at the junior high where they're going to be putting the sidewalk and it'll cut across some of our property. Um, certainly the sidewalk is going to be much much more valuable than the six square feet that we're going to give up for it. So um, I mean, it's it's just one of those things you have to do. So. Do we have any end in sight on when this is going to yeah. start? Yeah. That's what I, I said, Jim, is it going to happen in my lifetime? <laughs> It's kind of like the road coming in from the south. Um, who knows if it'll happen in our lifetime. But he thinks it's getting closer. He goes, we're to the point where the attorneys are involved. So um, he thinks we're getting close. And Hopefully, then, I, I would say in the next year or so. And how much have we contributed to it already? Nothing yet. So we're just setting we're, it we've got to the side. Okay. Lie. So if it doesn't go through, we, we don't get lose to keep any those. money. Now, when it does finally go through, here's the 75000 we have. So, but didn't we increase it by like another 20 at some point? 25? I thought we all came back. Okay. So it, 75 total. 75 total. It's city, county, and school that yes. contributed equally. Is it? Plus whatever. The, I can't remember how much the grant's for. But I think each of us ponied up 75,000 and then the grant covers the rest. So when they do start, do you know if they'll use local contractors or don't know, don't know. I'm not there to go out for the bid process okay. you know, and with the grant who runs I'm, it I mean who's gonna run that sure, that sounds like the city is spearheading. <laughs> you're like not me yeah the city spearheading Jim's kind of okay. been put in charge of it and you know whenever we get grant they're so specific on the details of going out for bids and everything so I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be a pretty strenuous bid process Anybody else? Uh, Glen Rose ISD recommends approval to grant an easement at Glen Rose Junior High School to the city of Glen Rose for the purpose of the sidewalk project. We do have the recommendation. We have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Very good. Mr. Corcoran, one more time. Consider approval, approval of the John Deere 325G compact track loader purchase using bond funds. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I don't know if y'all are aware, but we have a uh, tractor that uh, it says John Deere on it, but I think it's older than John Deere is actually in this business. <laughs> um, we, we've had it for many years. Tommy, do you remember how old that thing is? It was here before I got yeah. here. Yeah, so it was, it was here. here when I got here, so that was 24 years ago. So uh, it's an old one, and we put a lot of work into it. It still does a good job for us for, you know, hauling dirt around, stuff like that. But, but we're getting to the point where we're we're doing a lot more work uh, on our ag department could use it tremendously up there at the ag barn and uh, you know we just found out we've had to go rent equipment here lately that you know to do some projects to save some money on the bond and uh, our, our tractor just couldn't handle it so we've had to go rent equipment and everything and, uh, felt like the skid steer was the best bang for our buck uh, got a hold of United Ag in, in Cleburne I felt like they gave us a pretty good deal on a on a mid-range uh, skid steer. Uh, it's in the mid-class, 300 class. Uh, and talked to the guy, kind of told him our needs. Uh, he felt like this was the, the way to go. Uh, I think it would be very beneficial. Now, I say the, those ag guys will use that because you can use it as a forklift. You can use it as, a, and they borrow our forklift probably every other day to move their material around. Uh, they need it all the time up at the ag barn. Um, <clears throat> so it will it will get used. There's no doubt about that. And it's just uh, an instrument or a, um, a tractor that will get more done than what we have. Where will it be stored? We'll, have, we'll store it in the maintenance barn. Yeah, yeah under lock and key and card. <laughs> and those things get stolen pretty easy. <laughs> And then the, the budget it's coming out of is? Bond, the transportation uh, bond. Is that included already in this? No. So it will be in addition to the 581000 And were those monies going to be used for anything else? Uh, just buses right now is needed. Um, probably, you heard Matt talk about the mileage on our Suburbans. We're looking at ordering a couple of Suburbans next year. But we're at a point now in our fleet that we're in pretty good shape. So we can sit on that money a little bit and buy when we really need uh, instead of just going out and buying buses. But, you know, let's look at Suburbans, look at something like this uh, that we really need for the district. So 
Well, I mean, does that include the pallet forks and bucket? It everything? does include the pallet fork and bucket. Uh, anything else we'll have to purchase. John, do you like them? John Deere's? Okay, it'll work. That's what y'all use. If I'm reading this right, it's, it looks like it's uh, AC cab and, and yeah, it's got high, everything. High flow, two speed. I don't know if y'all ever need the high flow, but yeah, that's like for. And he said it probably be more what you need it for. head and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But. If you're lifting a bunch, so that high flow is handy on yeah. the hydraulic lift. Or a broom, you put a broom on high flow. No, oh, yeah. for a high you flow. put dirt on that high flow, and you don't have to move dirt. You better it spreads it about. 10, 15 foot wide. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, nice. and, All right. I mean, there's a need for this, and it's going to be used well, often. Yeah. Anything else? Any questions? Glen Rose ISC administration recommends the purchasing of John Deere 345G track for $76,621.16. Recommendation. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Very good. Thank you, Mr. Corker. All right, that adjourns our meeting. Good luck to all those going to Weatherford. Drive careful. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Some good stuff, Mike. And today.